I, uh, I have the privilege of, uh, of introducing a person that uh, I've really come to appreciate uh, as Wayne Christian uh, for Angelina County and uh, uh, for a few of other counties that are not here. We, we don't have the privilege of having him as our state representative. Uh, we are soon going to have one in his yeah. same character and caliber That's in right. James White. The uh, GOPAC uh, is, a, is an organization that I'm going to let Wayne tell you about. He's going to kind of be our, be our MC to go through this and introduce some of these other folks. But uh, if you want to, uh, you want a, a picture of what an American patriot is, a godly man who represents his uh, constituents and does it so well, use Wayne Christian as a model. Right. Wayne, uh, you come and, and take this over, please. Thank you, Mr. Bob. It's, it's, that's a pretty humbling statement for uh, Mr. Bob saying, may I say that y'all have been not chosen. Uh, you've had great leadership in the past. Mr. Bob is the finest individual you could possibly choose. A godly man who is a man of dedication. I appreciate so much having him over his neighbor. And I'll tell you the truth, folks. We done done our part in Nacogdoches County and Shelby and Jasper Speeds and all this thing, okay? And we want to return in Sabine All this here, we've done it. It's y'all's turn now, okay? Y'all's turn to jump on board and do what's right. Let me tell you, the last time I was at redistricting about eight, nine years ago, y'all's fella was sitting in Ardmore, Oklahoma, while we were in the Capitol trying to draw the map, okay? Now understand, we're just three votes shy this session. Three votes is all it will take for the other side to take over. Now here, here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand, and I think you need to draw this picture to me as the campaign issue, okay? If we lose three to four votes out of 150 in the Texas House, even though we win the U.S. Congressional delegation in Washington this time, in this election, and we take over the U.S. Congress, which is my prayer, the number one goal for this election, is to take over the U.S. Congress and stop the bleeding, okay? But in the same election, we could send our future congressional delegation, the largest United States, to vote for Pelosi and Obama in 2012 and for the next decade. Now, how do we do that? Is to keep doing what we've been doing in this part of the world and sending Democrats to vote during the redistricting. Because, listen, if they draw the map, they will draw for the next decade the congressional delegation for the state of Texas for the next decade, which means, and take this, this is why it's important for us to understand this. I am a Republican in Deep East Texas in Shelby County, okay, from my district. Around me are five Democrats. In the same election where they elected, y'all elected, a Democrat as state representative, John McCain won at the top. That shows your friends and neighbors do not connect the dots between Obama and your state representative. Now, let me make it clear. If we send just three more Democrats to the Texas House of Representatives, we will draw a Democratic map. So instead of having Louie Gomer, you'll have another Max Sandler. Okay? That's what's going to happen. That is the big issue in the race people don't connect. Whenever people tell you, I vote the man, not the party, I say, y'all better wake up. Anytime you vote anybody, whether it be a Bill White as governor or anybody else, they're going to jump on board the Obama wagon and try to keep our nation a socialized system which they're driving to. Okay? So that's my challenge for you today. Uh, we are glad to be here, honored to be here. I'm Wayne Christian. I'm uh, from just over the stream here. And uh, I am the, the chairman for education, if you can believe this, in GOPAC. Now, my wife said, they said they put you in charge of education. And she thought that was kind of an oxymoron, but I guess so. Uh, I told her I fit oxymoron pretty good. Ox is big and moron speaks for itself. So I was like, okay. It is a privilege to be here. But let me tell you what you've got an opportunity to do in, in uh, this part of the world is to send a godly, conservative individual uh, to Austin, Texas, to represent you. And it's time we stood up and did exactly that. But the gentleman you have in place is a good fellow. I mean, you know, he is a good fellow. I'm not going to talk now. Honorable man. But let me tell you, he was in Ardmore, Oklahoma last time we drew the map. His voting record is terribly liberal. 
And when he goes there, he will vote for Obama. He will vote for the leadership that will keep Obama and the liberals in place. And that's just a fact of life. And a lot of people say, oh, our old fellow wouldn't do that because he's a boy from Deep East, Texas. He wouldn't do this. Let me tell you, he lives in St. Augustine, works in Center, Texas, where I do, go to church in Nacogdoches, where I represent, and I don't know how he wound up representing y'all here in Angelina County. Okay? And that's something, some of the questions he's asked. And I noticed in the newspaper when Mr. White attacks him on that, he says, we checked it out and it is totally legal what we are doing. Well, legal and right ain't a lot of times exactly what's correct, okay? What's ethical. Let me tell you, uh, it's kind of a, a thing. I, the gentleman that you have running for office here is ever, I, I appreciate it. He's been an activist for years in the Republican Party down in Harris County. He's a veteran who has served our country well. And I, I think what speaks so greatly of a veteran that will come, come home and, and do the work and dedicate the rest of his life to teaching in our children and being an educator to pass it on to future generations. I think that speaks miles. I think there should be no greater honor to people in the community than number the preacher, the teacher, and the veteran who make it possible for the preaching and the teaching. Those are the things. And James has found himself being two things. Now, as the only Christian in the Texas legislature, right, I want to introduce the real white man in this race, James White. State. When you give a, a, a preacher's son a microphone, you tell him to go about 15, 20 minutes. He may be in trouble. But uh, I want to thank all of you for showing up today. I want to thank all of you for what you've done so far. Um, my life has truly been blessed. Uh, this has been an interesting year so far. And um, yeah, sitting up listening to Bob and uh, Come election night, we're going to have a lot of uh, good stories. A lot of folks said to have this room, this full here in East Texas was quite, would be, you know, a farce. Uh, not possible. And, um, you know, I'm just going to uh, just be honest with you. When I thought I would run for this race, uh, some, some folks thought it was, uh, it was a good thing. Man wants to help out. You know, that's fine. But uh, we don't know about this. So um, a lot of folks will be saying that by the end of November, too, uh, after we win. But um, before I really get into any, any, any remarks, and let me just recognize some folks that will pass you up. It's not a problem. And let me tell you why I think we're going to win this race. And not this race, but we're going to win a lot of races throughout East Texas. It's because we've got good leadership. Starts, I, you know, I'm kind of, you know, some people may say I'm an elitist, but I am sort of kind of opposite. I think success does begin at the top. And I've had the opportunity to sit in the same room with two fine gentlemen like uh, Representative Christian, Representative Dan Flynn, and sit and listen to them on substantive issues. Got $18 billion revenue shortfall coming up. And they put it out and say, we can do it without raising taxes. We can do it by being smarter and being more efficient and making tough decisions. And I'm proud and honored and blessed to have the opportunity to work with two fine gentlemen like that. Um, 